Hey guys, I'm back at the British Boutique Guitar Festival and I'm here with Ben from Lighthouse Instruments and we're going to be taking a look at two of Ben's creations today. So what have we got here then? What's this one I'm holding in my hand? So these are, this is specifically, so far, the Beacon DT drop top. Okay. That reason being is because the, the idea that I'm trying to the, do, as much as it's heavily influenced by some sort of reputable brands out there, um, it's kind of my take on some of the stuff that makes them great, along mm. with some elements that I've taken from classic instruments and arch top guitars. Right. Um, so that from the set of plans that I've made up, I can make essentially four instruments drop top with a tremolo system. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you could do as a wraparound or a hardtail. Mm -hmm. Same as a carved top, which is fully arched with no chambers, same as this one, but with a wraparound, which you could also then do as a tremolo. So from yeah. the same plans, the only thing I need to change is the break angle in the neck. Right. Creating four things that are quite versatile and can kind of, you can tweak them to to the, the customer's taste, I suppose. So this one specifically is a mm -hmm. pelly body with a seven and a half mil maple dro drop top that's okay. been given, I, I don't really know what to call it, but it's, I suppose, kind of a desert burst, maybe more nice to you. It's kind of slightly golden going out to darker, but yeah. it's quite subtle, um, just going from the grain of the wood itself. Um, with two P90s and a single coil, a shaler tremolo, system mm -hmm. and some Grover tuners. Um, the back on it otherwise is still the Spelly body, which is a two-piece. Um, but that's not chambered, you said? That's not chambered. This so that, is all that accounts for the weight. <laughs> yeah, that definitely accounts for the weight and the thicker neck. Um, and we've got a seven-piece laminate neck um, with a, I think it's a one and a half degree break angle for the neck mm -hmm. on this one because it's the drop top and about a 14 degree angle on the headstock. Cool. Um, You've got Sapelli, African Rosewood, which is this lovely pink kind of streak in the middle, and then maple as well, which then locks into the head plate, which is also maple, and mm -hmm. the top. So everything, generally speaking for me, I'd quite like to be thematic throughout. Yes. Same reason as having um, this inlay up here with brass, the um, truss rod cover being brass, and the dots as well for the frets. I quite like everything to to make sense of the instrument rather than yeah. chucking things together. It, it sounds like you've put a lot of thought into the spec of it. Like when you're sort of piecing together the idea of what you want to do, it sounds like you've, instead of just thinking, right, we'll just chuck a few things together. Yeah. You've actually sat down and planned out exactly how everything's going to tie together. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things that for me with an instrument, like we're talking about earlier, mm. part of it is the feel, part of it is aesthetics that come into it and draws you to something. But when it's me making the thing, I'd like it to be, I know exactly why something is the way it is. Yes. And if it can be altered, I know how to alter it. And yeah, that's kind of where it comes from. Um, and the same principle applies for for the second as well. So mm. it's quite nice to see them come to fruition, which is nice. Yeah, a absolutely. Rendition of, of I think games. you're right with the feel thing. Like feel is such a big thing with guitars, especially when you go down the route of, you know, obviously having a custom guitar built. Yeah. And one thing that doesn't really translate on camera very well, but you may be able to see it, is this is quite a neck turn to that camera there <laughs> it's quite a substantial neck which for me i instantly gravitate towards thicker neck guitars anyway and i talk about a lot yep. of videos yep. so if i pick up a guitar and the neck is huge it's instantly like okay now i know what we're working with you absolutely yep. <laughs> i actually find it easier to play a guitar with a bigger neck than i do a thinner neck yeah for me it's the thumb it's the same sort of thing as having yeah. big volume there it's it's an ergonomic thing for me for mm. me personally yeah but i tend to play where i do use my thumb a little bit for a wraparound aspect same, yeah and I don't get tired from doing it. Now, again, I've got quite a big hands, mm. but and that's where the subjectivity comes in. That's always part of it. Of course, yeah, absolutely. So a little bit of me always is going to trickle down. It's just part of part of the show, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I always talk about my sort of preferred setup whenever I'm explaining to people how I want a guitar to be set up. It's always like thick neck, high action, and I'm happy. Good to go. Which usually is the complete opposite to what most people would go for, mm. but for yeah. some reason, that's what I gravitate towards. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said... P90s, are these your own pickups or are these branded? So they are technically branded by okay. number 19 pickups, which is a subsidiary of, num of Parkhurst Guitars. Right, okay. Who's also here at the... So you would have seen Egypt. the video yeah. that I did with Parkhurst earlier on as well. Um, and it was actually the first commission I asked from Jake a few years back to be able to put into an Epiphone SG I had. Oh, okay. And I asked him specifically, this was again, re-going back to your Black Sabbath phase, you know, um, and I was looking at Tony <laughs> Iommi, he's kind of going, okay, well, the thing is, if you're going for like Planet Caravan or something, you've got this really lovely sort of yeah. jazzy kind of aspect going on, but then you also get, well, you know, like Warpig or anything, you get a lot of grunt. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I can find these specs that John Birch made for him. Is it possible that you can try and noodle around that kind of work with with what those mm. are and he came up with these two p90s um which i think the neck is about a 9k output with about six henry so 
quite beefy. Okay. The bridge, on the other hand, there's- which for higher gain, sort of if you depending on what your gain set is in your hand, it, there, there's elements of it, but it's about 14k output with wow. about eight Henrys. Like it's a huge. It's pretty hot for a P90. It is really <laughs> hot. So I've had these for a couple of years, and I was playing through an AC15, and I just could not get them to work. Which again, <laughs> this is kind of where it comes in. So for this one, I'd asked them to be able to sort of match a vi- more vintage spec mm. single coil, yeah. so that you can still get the second and fourth positions on your selector and still get some of that spank, which strats are known for. Yeah. But with a thicker neck, the heavier body, and that little bit more grunt, it's just mm. it's just a little bit fatter. And for me, yeah. it's how I like to play. Like my influences are very much Mark Knopfler, Dave Gilmore, things like that, where right. you still yeah. get a lot of meat there. But as soon as you start using dynamics of the volume on your fingers, which yeah. is how I tend to play, it really emphasizes that. So for yeah. me, I was trying to as much as there are guitars that are, can be built for it, people mm. that don't necessarily associate themselves with that kind of playing style. If for me to get to get my ideas across, I figured if I can enjoy playing it, it's probably yeah. going to do that better than me using like um, super distortions going through yeah, and something else I'm not used to. Yeah, um, that makes a lot of sense because that's what I always look for in a guitar is versatility because I'm the same sort of way inclined. I come from like a blues background cool. and it's all about dynamic playing. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So if the pickups can do that, then you know, going, if yep. you can go from like Mark Knopfler to Jimmy Page and you know via, like, via Tony yeah. Iommi, then you're off to a good yeah, start. Yeah, you, you, you cover a lot of spaces there, yeah. you know. So, um, but yeah, no, they sell these. It's a really unusual thing, but especially the neck pickup. I tend to play mm. if I'm on a strat, it will be sort of bridge. Uh, sorry, middle and neck usually, or just the neck. Yeah, same. High gain stuff. I'll do the exact same thing. For me, yeah. I love the warmth that the neck pickup brings, mm. and for whatever reason, some P nineties they can be quite um, pokey. I suppose is the best way to put it. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And for whatever reason, these don't have that. So for me, it, it worked well with the heavier body and neck and it seemed to really makes emphasize sense. that warmth so okay yeah no that makes a lot of sense let's have a listen then cool. so i'm just going to play a little bit now uh plugged into the rd uh, rd application do list custom which belongs to lewis from lt custom mm. guitars so the amp is set to a drive channel like a moderate kind of classic drive but to test the dynamics obviously we'll roll the volume back as well because that's always the the best test yeah, i think yeah. if you can set it on like full See, that's it sort of cleans up nice and then you really can nice. and that's a 14 care but like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is is wild <laughs> yeah and that's the bridge pickup as well so yeah. see we could we could go to 10 there <laughs> i hit the middle pick <laughs> See, that's nice because you get that kind of chime, but you still get the fatness from the P90. And that's the other thing. Because, I mean, again, it's the same sort of principle, like if you're buying kind of a cheaper Strat or something, mm. and it's your first, usually your first guitar. Yeah. You can make them sound great. You can make them sound really well yeah. if you know how your amp's running or you know how to mm. dial it in. Um, but for me, P90s are something that I only came across playing-wise quite recently. And I was yeah. like, well, actually, there's there's a load of things you can do with them that they, they go across the full spectrum. If you're going for even like... um. Uh, art soft guitars mm. p90s are in quite a lot of them i think p90s are probably the most underrated style of pickup it's, because, it's a really unusual yeah. thing but they work really it, it well. sort of <laughs> takes you everywhere from like you know if you play like a telecaster for instance a p90 in the bridge can give you that kind of that kind yeah. of twang thing yeah but then when you go to like a p90 in the neck it's like a really warm single coil it's it's the mid and the, that also upper upper bass if that's kind of a thing. Yeah. But you get it's um, the fatness. It, yeah, if you're doing that kind of James Bond chord, it's just that nice. It's ch- it's chime. It's the it's that kind of thing where you can get that really nice trebly creamy tone to mm, it. But the bass and the, the 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 mid for it just they don't overtake anything. It's yeah. just a very nice balance mix for yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great style of pickup. I think I think it's really underrated because because yeah. you can literally play rock on it. You could you know. Bridge or neck, P90. And then obviously you can go to one of the in-between positions, roll the volume back. Very much accompanying, yeah. Yeah, it works great. It, it's it's just the perfect combination. And having the single coil in the middle is nice because that adds a little bit more of that sort of bite and clarity. Well, then. That's the thing I was going to do the same as this, is just have two humbucker-sized 
um, hmm. uh, pickups in there. But I thought, you know, actually, the thing is, people go for a strat because you have that verse. If you don't use the middle, yeah. you'll use it with something. Yeah. Um, I, I just, don't think anyone actually uses the strat middle on its own, really. So no, not since the sixties. I don't luck. think. <laughs> yeah, since um, since the since they did away with the three way switch, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, and th and that's pretty much it, really. So I mean, for me, having that just extra versatility mm. means if you are wanting to play more clean delay reverb influence stuff, yeah. you can dial back the volume, really get these airy tones, or you can just have a little bit more of that punchy spank that you associate with a single coil. Can flip this over to the clean channel, actually. And then when you bring the single coil in, it just softens it. It's yeah. almost like it's not like a woolly sound, but it's like it's like a blanket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, like... because you could like you could play like funk with that. It just peeks through a little bit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's 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 such a, a unique sounding pickup. I think the P90. There's a lot of clarity to P90s as well. Which yeah, I think it's something another another thing that people have. That is, it's an odd thing, but I, th I think it's because you do get somewhere there that have that punch, mm. but they only work well driven, and you get some P90s that just don't have that, yeah. that, that that retention to them for for the clean tones. But whether or not it's due to the instrument or the pickup itself, I, I don't know. Mm. It's just from experience of playing some of them, yeah, you, you kind of have to know how to play it if that makes sense as yeah. well. And um, so I'm quite lucky and fortunate for a prototype type of pickup from a few years ago. Yeah, they, they, these work really really well. They yeah. suit this. So. <laughs> Yeah, they do. They do see. They do really complement the tone on the guitar. Yeah. So what's this thing then? So obviously, so, same guitar model. Same, same basic principle. Um, and again, from the fretboard aspect, Excuse the top um, is very much what I wanted it to be. Of um, two instruments, like I was saying, that you can get from the same designs and totaling four instruments realistically. Um, but this one is I made specifically for myself. So I made a prototype. Oh, two year beginning of COVID it would have been right. Um, beginning of the COVID. I keep years. saying last year, and it's oh, not. Yeah, no. it's, not, it's not a year ago anymore. <laughs> and it was something where I was like, okay, I want a PRS. I'm going to make it. So I verbatim copied yeah. one, added a 25 and a half inch scale length, which is what these two have as well. Okay, but so on that one, then. I messed it up. I'd done something with the trem system where it was it was awful. It was a bad it was a bad decision <laughs> in every choice of it. And my friend tried, and he was like, I really enjoy that. Mm. I really like was it, I like the neck. I was like, great thick necks are, mm. are a good thing. You know? Yeah. Um, and I like how it's going. So what I'm going to do, um, he's like, if you could do it without the mess up, I'll put the deposit on right now. And I was like, oh, well, thanks. So it was my first customer, which was a lovely thing. And I I found it really difficult to part with it. And I had two P90s in it rather mm. than two P90s in a single coil. Right. I found it really difficult to part with it. So I thought, I'm going to make one for myself. But this was as I was starting to make a fully carved arch top instrument. So yeah. it was a full 17 inch big jazz guitar. And elements of that, like you'll see, I wrote out the shape, I wrote out the electronics cavities and things, just because it's an accurate way of doing it. Mm. Everything else on both of these instruments, hand carved with chisels and gouges and planes, their thickness with planes, everything's done with me doing it. Yeah. And I wanted it to be for me as a thing of kind of going, well, this is the progression I've made over the past yeah, you know, four, five years. Um, with a <laughs> thick neck as well, which again, something I'd, I'd like to refine and get to the point where I'm completely happy with it. But it's one of those things. Um, but it's got a wrapper and signum bridge. So I found it to be honestly a really stable bridge the last time I used it. Yeah. Um, a three way toggle switch and two humbuckers that are, again, number 19's Confluence set. Mm -hmm. So they, they're not a path, they're not a high output. They're somewhere kind of in the middle where um, magnets are mixed rather than doing an equal two or an equal five for each. Okay. One of the coils has one, one of the coils has something else. And oh, it means yeah. that you sometimes get the warmth and the clarity, but you also get a little pokiness as well that worked really well like the best of both worlds kind between of between vintage and modern that kind of aspect too because like because like i said i'm not particularly a high game player despite mm. playing through a crack in i use it to get really clean it's a really bizarre setup that i managed <laughs> to find myself in um and this is this is pretty much it so again with the slightly thicker neck and the far heavier body i think it's about 50 mil or 49 mil at the highest point of the timber itself and, and this isn't chamber no this is this, so this is heavy this like, is a weighty guitar so if you like heavy guitars it's, it's something that I know I have to refine at some stage, but you got to start somewhere with yeah. it. And for me, I was like, well, I'm happy just hefting it around the place. But then a lot of players like the heavier feel as well. Like I personally like a heavy feeling guitar because yep. it, there's just something it kind of I feels it's not going to break. <laughs> yeah, for me. I think like if especially if you're gigging a lot or like mm -hmm. using it all the time, you do want a guitar that kind of doesn't feel like a toy, and you want it to feel like. Do you know what? I could chuck this in the back of the van, and it'll be okay, and it'll be fine. When I, it yeah. might be dented, but it'll be fine. And yes. That's, well, the, the, that's the important thing isn't one it? of my customers that I did a, a, a bit of a repair work for the best thing he had he had he was a teacher and he had his 2014 Les Paul somewhere about 20 
2200 pounds something like that right yeah the first day he took it to a lesson for one of the, the kids he was teaching dropped it and it got to him and he was like and the kid was freaking out and he was like don't worry it's the guitar they get dented and i was like yeah that's the best yeah. way to look at it that is yeah. the perfect thing um so yeah so same sort of thing as we're talking about but this one i planned out every aspect to it so like if you're looking at the scarf join here or even like the heel join the laminates all match up so these are all two separate bits of wood down here and here despite the green direction being different from how it's worked right yeah. i've tried to make sure that everything lines up to make sure that it's again sequential with with what works in the guitar yeah that makes um, sense. so yeah it's something that i kind of wanted to show is like this is what i can do mm. despite refinement being required I want to show what, what, what I'm capable of in that sense. And this is to me what, what that is. <laughs> I, I think every guitar builder is going to think they need to refine anyway. That's part of the progression, isn't totally, it? Totally. Yeah. Even like, obviously you said you wanted to base this on a PRS. Even Paul Reed Smith himself still develops his guitars. Yeah. And he still yeah. tries new things every year because even he's not satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I think true. that's just part of being a builder. Of <laughs> I think if you get to that point where you're fully satisfied and you think you've achieved everything, you've sort of peaked of news. Like, where can you kind of go from here as a builder? Yeah, you got to take on criticism for it. And like, I'm hoping that this is these two spivvy, unless, you know, anyone's kind of, I, I might be taken by it myself, but unless it's that kind of thing where I can kind of show and tweak them and kind of go, look, this is mm. what a base kind of aspect or a fundamental level of what they do. Yeah. They can be tweaked. And that's kind of, kind yeah. of part of it. You know? Absolutely. And obviously with it being customs, like if people were to order these, it would be more to their spec. Anyway. Oh yeah, I mean the, the thing is, you if you really wanted to, you could put three single coils in the tremolo system in there if you really wanted to, you know. Yeah. Um, I had a lecturer that ended up making a fat neck Telecaster in the eighties. Right. He had a pickup running the full way along the neck, underneath like <laughs> wow. where the side trussle. He was like, it worked. It was a really weird sound because it was constant. Yeah. But. But it worked. It worked, and he was like, the thing is, if you had maintenance to it, that was where the issue was. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah. It's kind of things, like people do weird stuff and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping that these two will kind of carry on that. Let's have a listen to this one then. Yeah, cool. <laughs> dynamic even those like as full humbuckers you can still roll them back and and it's something that i wanted to make sure it was happening because for me like i i it's been up until the last six months i've not liked humbuckers right i like listening to the music that they produce it might just be my playing style but mm. i've never got on with them um i, I couldn't tell you why if i'm honest yeah. but i've started to play i played a couple of instruments recently over the past six months that i was like this oh hello <laughs> um <laughs> that this works really well that for, for certain things it could be a change in amp it could be it could be anything like that and for whatever reason it just clicked so playing some instruments where <laughs> you um <coughs> you end up getting uh sorry guys mike is putting us off he's not being very professional <laughs> and he's laughing <laughs> so, <laughs> so again like some instruments where i find that i can't roll back so even if you're doing like martin all three kind of things mm. even if he's using his emgs for any reason there'll still be parts where you're dialing in the tone a little bit to course, get more yeah. of that woolly kind of sound coming in but it's defined and mm. for me it has to be that because i use the volume and the tone for yeah for every, all types of playing that's always been my problem with humbuckers as well i love the sound of humbuckers for certain things yeah but for me if if i was to pick like the ultimate combination i would always have a humbucker with something else yeah. it's always got to be like a humbucker two singles or like a humbucker and a p90 i've got to have that contrast yeah i find when i play like a guitar with two humbuckers it, like you said i'm kind of stuck i'm like i can't go anywhere else with yeah. the sound it's difficult to find ones that either are so dissimilar from each other that they yeah. almost don't work when they're played together yeah or that they sound almost so similar that there's not any de 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 definable yeah. difference between the two other than statistics of output and 
yeah that kind of thing exactly the problem um, i've had many times and it's, it's something that i think is difficult so medium for these they're not so different that they sound like completely different they're, mm. they're not that they are not matched i suppose but you can get different sounds from them with the dynamic play that's yeah. that's what works um so yeah so it's something that i was like you know i don't have a guitar with humbuckers in it i may as well make myself one and see what happens yeah and i found that from both of these the heft and again it is a thing of it the heft of the neck and the heft of the body do add up sustain for me but they also there's a point where you do play i think it's around about the i can't remember which one it is it's between the, the seventh and the eleventh fret i think on the d or g string and things just start humming and you can play right. when you're playing something you're like this feels lovely and again the the, the pickups kind of do work with that it's something along those lines and it just starts to go and i, I don't know why <laughs> but it's either the join aspect to it, the slight yeah. things to it and it's just it just works so um sonically i'm pretty pretty pleased <laughs> yeah definitely they've got a really fat sound as well like when you just dig into a big chord there's plenty of information there isn't yeah, there in the yeah. tone Cool. So yeah, if, if people want to find out more about these, then where can they go? So realistically, um, I was waiting to get a website sorted until we had some photos of these guys right. done and the art stuff <laughs> that I built finished. Um, most of the stuff that I do is through Lighthouse Instruments on Instagram, mainly for the fact that my social media pages, I put everything up from how to make these for one thing. So I'm very, okay. open, I'm very open with everything that I put mm. up for the fact that if someone wants to see if I've made a mistake and how I fixed it, they'll see how I do it. Um, there's no, there's a, for me, it's being transparent with everyone because anyone can go and make one of these if they really put their mind to it, you know. Mm. Um, but if someone wants to come with me, they'll they'll see exactly why I've made the choices I have done. Right. Um, and I'm pretty quick with getting back to you and stuff. So if it turns out you've even got a question of just saying, you know, why did you do that? I'll, I'll happily chat to you, you know. So cool. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. The best I'll, part. I'll, I'll put some links down in the description anyway, so people can go and check these out if you want to check out more about cool. these instruments and. Go and click some of those links. Yeah, sweet. Well, thank you for coming on and no showing me these fantastic much. guitars. And let me know what you guys think. Big thanks to Mike for putting on the British Boutique Guitar Festival again and all the other brands for taking part as well. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching.